It's been 12 days and these first lime logs are ready to go into the fruiting area. If you can tell, there's lots of good pins. One's there, there, big group of them there. Really spread out evenly all over like it should. And they're uh, pinning in the very top and center of the log, which is a good sign as well. Make sure, tells you that there's no heat issues. So I'm gonna put those in the fruiting area today. Underneath them are two heat pasteurized logs that I made on the same day. And they're pinning at the same rate, but you can see where I got a piece of masking tape over a moldy hole already. I don't see any problems on this one. But I think that kind of goes to show you that the lime method actually may be better even at keeping contamination away than the heat pasteurization method. And my theory on it is because when you use the heat pasteurization, like I said before, you're killing off the seeds, leaving them susceptible to bacteria, which then breeds mold. But you can see here again, like there's there's a cotton seed plant growing right there. They're all sprouting in these logs. And actually, you can't really tell too much where the sprouts are anymore because most of the mycelium has grown over top of it and probably uh, suffocating it out and eating it at the same time, so it won't cause a problem. But like this bad spot here on this heat-treated log, there's definitely a, uh, a piece of seed right there that I can see it right against the plastic. So it makes me really believe that it's those, uh, the extra amount of seed that's causing a problem. Now you could always too probably uh, kind of give your hauls a shake in a bucket before you load it into your measuring bucket to uh, settle all the seed to the bottom and then you know pull all the hauls off the top of it or straw in that manner to get as much of the seed out. When you're chopping, when you're chopping straw up outside too, like on a wood chipper or a lawnmower, most of the time the seed gets thrown out because it's heavier and denser and you you know it gets kind of caught up in the grass or whatever you're uh, chopping it on and then you just pull off the material off the top it doesn't have so much seed in it so that's great now these logs I made afterwards with only two cups of lime in a batch in a barrel they're still kind of growing kind of slow and also too I think I might have messed up and only soaked these for a little over an hour because I got the, the timers on my phone wrong. I'm not quite sure. So I might redo this with another two cups just to, to verify it wasn't my own screw up. And here's the ash logs made with one gallon of the sifted ashes. Now I can tell there's a, I don't know if it's because of the, the batch of holes I used, but there seems to be a lot more cottonseed germinating in these. And both of these are, you know, they were doing kind of slow still. But it looks like it's colonizing without any problems. I mean, as long as it gets there without a whole lot of metabolites squirting out and little spots of mold, it's still good. And back here you can see I got another shelf of heat pasteurized ones. I don't see any problems on these and they'll be ready to uh, put into the fruiting area soon and pin. So, I'm really happy about all this. You can see I have both my barrels going at the same time, both with the uh, four cups of lime and half a cup of just soap. And you figure now that it only takes me the two hours of soaking time and no heat up or cool down. Like I said, I can easily make four batches or more a day, but I ain't gonna have the room for that. You see that I get my, when I get a full maximum amount of mushrooms down here, I fill up all my shells. You can see too back here, I'm still getting big mushrooms coming off and, and some, you know, similar mold problems, spotty mold problems. And I probably had to throw another couple logs out that uh, definitely couldn't make it to the uh, second flush. I see, it seems that 
when the temperature got down to uh, 60, was it? yeah, it's uh, 60 right now, that seems to be the sweet spot as far as having very few um, spotty mold problems. But, so I still think the heat is contributing, contributing to the heat pasteurization logs problems. And that's probably why I've always had success mainly in the middle of winter when it's even under 60 degrees down here. So if you want to continue to do heat pasteurization, you're going to have to either do it in smaller uh, bags or whatever or get your temperature down to 60 degrees or so. And it might just be a winter thing. But like I said, why go heat pasteurization when you can get lime? or uh, the ashes if it works, if it works. So I'm gonna make these two batches up. Another thing too, the, uh, the screw type of bottle jack I was using for my press uh, was just too much work for the, even the seven amp drill that I have. It was tearing the gearing, the, uh, I guess the transmission out of it, you guess it, you call it or whatever, out of the drill, tearing the gears up. And uh, that also might be too why I'm having some more problems because I've, I haven't been able to get as much torque on it and squeeze uh, a little more water out. But you can see now, I got a six ton hydraulic jack. I had to space out the top a little bit of the, uh, the paddle to make it fit on there. First time I use it though, of course, it adds more pressure and I hear wood creaking. And I start to get out of the way because I think I'm gonna get hit by a sharp flying piece of wood that's gonna kill me. So I had to replace the, uh, the unpressure treated two by four board on the one side. And I just doubled it up with some uh, two uh, sections of one by eight pressure treated. Screw them together, then drilled the holes out. Attach it to the same central block Remember, it has the metal plate. Now, because this hydraulic jack, it only goes up eight inches. I think that's pretty much uh, the norm for hydraulic jacks. The uh, screw style jack, I think, probably went up almost uh, way over a foot. And so, I have to use another section of this four by four pressure treated mm, four by four pressure treated lumber with another metal plate in the bottom of it so that I initially uh, push it off the top level then uh, you kind of have to kind of push it down after you release the pressure of the jack to give it a little space so you get the jack out of there or then uh, well you get the jack out push the piston back down in the jack give that other section a 4x4 four four, stick it in between the jack and this block so it has a, a spacer push that down and then you can drop the rack. Or, you know, alternatively, you could drill a hole in between these holes and uh, drop it three times instead of twice. But I think it's just easier to use the block. Plus, you could use the block to grab it and pull it down to push the piston down. I find it easier, though, to just to take the piston out and flip it upside down and press it against the ground to get it back in. But that's I can get way more pressure with that hydraulic jack than I could with the uh, screw style. So I'm going to stick with that and hopefully it doesn't wear out either. I can't see it. You would think that it would be more difficult with just a little leverage, but it does really good. All right, well, I'm going to get to today's work. And here in about a week or so, I'll give some updates on how the fruits off the lime logs look, if there's any more mold problems with them and any more mold problems in general. Another thing too, I've been getting laxed in uh, bleaching my basement. I went for probably a whole month without spraying any bleach on the floor and that, that, you know, that could have been a contributing problem too to all the spotty mold problems because I'm always bringing you know, the dry unpasteurized hauls down here and they get a little bit dusty, so you get a little bit of junk in the corners and everything, even though I spray everything down um, almost every night. So I'm, so at least 
every day that I'm making logs, that night I'll give a liberal uh, spring of the one cup per gallon bleach solution just on the floor after I've washed everything down and cleaned up. You can see here, here's the first lime log again. It's doing great. Got a little bit of metabolite dripped on it from a bad log above, which I already threw out and replaced. And uh, did my best to rinse off the, the mushrooms that got dripped on, but <clears throat> the orange staining will come off as it grows. The other one too is doing well. It's got uh, pins growing all all around it. And I can't can't really see a whole lot of uh, seedling material anymore. See, there is one right there. I see one over here. It's pretty much ate it all up again. From the same date. Here's the one heat-treated log with one bad spot, but you see otherwise it's doing great. As it's, uh, pear is doing well, too. But I've been sticking to the lime. I think it's going to be the best option I have, other than the ashes. Let's go take a look at this stuff back here. I have great news, by the way, that I'll uh, announce here in a few days. See here, here's the logs that had the two cups of lime. This one had two bags worth of spawn in the one log. And it looks like it's fully colonized, but a lot, a lot of... Uh, sprouted seeds. I don't know if that was because that uh, those certain bags of cotton seed hulls that I had had more seed content in it. I'm thinking probably not. But or, or that because I used two cups or because that I said before I didn't get a great press on these because my drill is wearing out. And they have a higher amount of water in it slowing things down and uh, giving more time for the seeds to grow. But otherwise, you know, again, I don't see any mold. It doesn't smell sour or funky. So I'm just gonna let it keep on going until it does whatever. The ones with ashes are about, well, they actually look, they look better, really. Both these logs only had one bag, and they look farther ahead than the two bag with the two cups of lime. But again, I mean, it looks like I looks like I might as well planted cotton seed on the top. There's so many sprouted seeds. It could be too that using the four cups of lime kills the seeds off a little more, and just only a certain percentage of them survive. That could be a possibility, or just prevents it from germinating altogether a certain percentage but yeah these ash ones looks further along they look like they're doing great so whenever I want to save money on lime I got some wood wood fire ashes from a fireplace I'll maybe just use those instead I'm really interested to see if it's true that I get more mushrooms too with the ashes and it just takes a couple days longer. So that's interesting. <laughs>